Hello everyone and welcome to the Arbor Farm. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how you can breed zinnias. Let's get started. <clears throat> zinnias are a beautiful annual flower uh, that can be grown from seed or cuttings. And there are a couple of different reasons that you might choose to pollinate your own zinnias. Um, first of all, maybe you want to create a new color, a new variety, and um, that's a lot of fun to do. And the other reason you might want to hand pollinate or breed your own zinnias are to maintain the varieties that you have. So we'll show you both methods and uh, let's get started. When you're pollinating zinnias, there are a couple of just basic um, supplies that you'll want to have on hand. We like to use a pair of tweezers and we also use these organza bags. Uh, just really simple. You can get them online at a variety of places. Um, we'll drop a link below to the ones that we use, but uh, these are very simple. Um, you want to use these to protect your flowers that you're pollinating from the bees so that the bees don't um, naturally do their work. You want to do the work yourself for the pollination and um, whether you're self-pollinating the flower or cross-pollinating. When choosing to pollinate, you want to select the flower. That's the first thing. So, um, for example, if I want to uh, do a queen lime red flower, um, let's say I'm going to self-pollinate it. That means I'm going to keep the same um, color variety of my flower. Um, I'm going to choose the flower as it's budding. Um, and so you can cover it when it's uh, at a closed, somewhat closed stage like this one here. And so it has not been pollinated yet by any bees and you can cover it with your organza bag so that it protects it as it opens to keep it from the bees pollinating it. In order to actually pollinate your flower, you're going to need to wait until it reaches the stage where it is fully open. For example, this flower is one that we've covered, one that we've protected from the bees and the other pollinators so that we can hand pollinate it ourselves and um, you want to wait until you can see both the florets that are open on the flower and then the floret, um, the pollen receivers, which are the little Y-shaped, uh, I'll point at them here with my tweezers, these tiny Y-shaped um, pieces that carry pollen or are the pollen receivers. So I've selected this flower. It has genetics that I like. I'm going to self-pollinate it. It's a queen lime red, and I like the characteristics of it because it's nice and stacked. Um, it's a double flower. That's what I'm looking for in the seeds that I want to save for the next season. So to self-pollinate this flower, I would just take my tweezers and I'm going to carefully remove some of these um, florets that carry the pollen. And then I'm going to carefully tip those and add the pollen from that onto the little Y-shaped pollen receivers that are in the flower. And so that's how you hand pollinate the flower to itself. So the seeds that I'm getting from this would be the same type of seed as this flower. Um, you can do this for three or four days in a row until these little pollen receivers, these little Y-shaped guys down in here, um, once they begin to dry up, then you'll know that the flower has been pollinated and it has received the pollen. So in the meantime, I'm going to need to cover this flower back up so that um, it doesn't get crossed with other flowers because I want my seed to stay true to this flower.
wanted to show you here on this flower, this one has better pollen receivers that you can see visually. And so I wanted to show this to you close up. These little Y-shaped pieces right here are the pollen receivers. So you can take pollen from these little florets and then apply it to the pollen receivers. Another reason that you might like to hand pollinate or breed your zinnias is to create a new variety. Uh, let's say, for example, that I wanted to create a really light pink color, um, a pastel pink color, and so I'm growing two varieties that could potentially lead to that. Um, I have this beautiful um, ivory colored zinnia, and then I have some beautiful salmon colored zinnias. I choose characteristics in both flowers that I like in order to do my cross pollination. And then I would take the floret from one and apply it to the pollen receiver of the other. And so I will show you that as well. I've located the two flowers that I want to work with with my cross pollination. I have this pink or salmon colored flower um, that's nice and stacked, uh, nice and double. It has several petals and I like those characteristics of it. It's a good sturdy plant. And then I also have one over here that is an ivory colored zinnia um, that I want to work with. And so uh, again, I would want to keep these covered to save seed for them for the next season so that the pollinators don't get at it and disturb what I'm doing. Um, but let's go ahead and look at those and do some cross pollination. So this flower here, this ivory one, is a really good flower to work with. Um, it has a lot of pollen on it on these little florets. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tweezers and pull out the florets. Um, and so I'm taking this color and I'm applying it to my salmon colored flower. So let's go on over to the salmon flower to apply the pollen. Here's my salmon colored zinnia. And um, you can see those little Y shaped receptors, pollen receptors down in the petals. And so I'm going to take my pollen from my ivory zinnia and apply it to this um, salmon colored flower to cross pollinate and to make a new color or a new variety. Again, this should be done every, for about three or so days in a row until you see those little pollen receptors begin to dry up. And that means that the pollen uh, took or it was received and you want to keep your flower covered with the organza bags um, that we talked about until the seed is fully mature. I wanted to show you this flower. This is something like what we would potentially be going for. It has a dusty pink color. Um, it's ivory and it's pink and we like that. Uh, so that's potentially something that we're going for in our cross-pollination project. So I mentioned waiting until your seed is fully ripened before you harvest it. And I wanted to show you how you can know that the pollinated flowers that you've covered and that you've hand pollinated, how you can know that the seed is beginning to turn ripe. And if you look at this flower, you'll notice that around the edges, it's starting to dry up and it's uh, have a few brown petals in there. So that's an indicator that it is beginning to ripen. The seed is matured and it's beginning to ripen. And if you pull a few petals back, you can see seed in there that is black. And you want the seed to be black before you harvest that. Now, if I were to cut this flower off at this point, I'm guessing up in here, the seed would not be ripe yet. It's just around the edges, and I'll pull one of these out so that you can see what a ripe zinnia seed looks like. 
So there is the black tip. It's the arrow shaped tip. And you can see that it's rigid and it is a ripe seed that would be viable for the next season. So you can take that seed and dry it, store it in a cool, dry location. Do not put it in plastic because it can mold and rot, but you could put it in an envelope, something paper or a paper bag, and label that then and save it for the next season. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and to watch this episode. Our goal is to provide content that's helpful to you. And so we hope that you have found today's video helpful and that you're able to apply that to your own gardening expertise. We'd like to ask you to click the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you can receive notifications as to when we publish our next content. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.